Well, I think this is a big debate as to how many packs we saw this morning. I'm not sure anyone actually knows for sure how many we did, but we have arrived at the Wild Dogs. They are almost like Christmas presents under a tree at the moment. They're all kind of lying underneath one gory bush and just trying to get some sort of shade. So they're just here on my right hand side and they're all tucked up as you can see. And like I say, they look like little Christmas presents and we certainly won't sneeze at a wild dog present. They are not that common for us to see and so it's really nice to see them here. Now this morning, obviously I haven't seen, didn't see which packs were involved and what the situation was, but it seems as though there must have been multiple individuals there and, and that the pack size must have grown. Now, from what I can gather from Grant, who is the guy that researches all of this and researches the wild dogs, he tells me that the Investec pack split. So it was an Investec pack and there was a breakaway that went towards Imbali and Hamilton's inside the Kruger National Park area. And that could then be this pack here with one of the males from the Angala pack that's joined. Now this morning what could have happened is they could have either bumped into the three or they could have bumped into the rest of the Investec pack and that's why we had a situation where we had so many dogs all together. Difficult to say because obviously we can't tell exactly how many dogs there are and without visually seeing every single one and IDing them from footage that we had be difficult to make out exactly who's who. Now I'm not sure where this dog is off to this is one of the female dogs that is moving you can see even though they fed this morning look at how slender she is she's got very little in that tummy and I think that they will be off and hunting fairly shortly this afternoon. I don't think we're going to have a situation where they're going to sit for too long. It's, it is sunny and it is warmer than what we've been experiencing the last few days, but is in no way very hot. So it means that these guys will move around and if they run towards Twin Dams at the right time and they time their approach perfectly, well, who knows? There often is impalas and nyalas all over that place and that will be wild dog heaven. The problem with Twin Dams is generally the dogs chase things out of us and onto little gauri and we can't then see them so hopefully if they do decide to chase there whatever runs runs into juma further and they can grab it or hopefully they end up in a situation where they go after something that is inside the mulawati and they run around and kill around the mulawati that would be ideal but you can see looking around and scent marking now there seems to be some dung for a hyena there you see that white sort of sticky stuff that's hyena dung that she went over and had a little sniff of and she may be just checking if it's not the scent marking from another pack of dogs and also just having a sniff around to see if there's any urination from some of the dogs that are within her pack at the end of the day either way we look at this and either way the packs this morning there was some sort of interaction between members that are not always in this pack and all members that have broken apart and that's why you'll find that they'll be very interested in sniffing around and the behavior that we saw the other day is because males like this collared male that have arrived from the Angala pack have basically caused an absolute stir and have made a situation where these Wild dogs are not 100% sure what's going on and, and the males are all trying to force themselves onto females. I don't think there's an alpha pair yet that is formed within this pack. And so that's maybe why everybody is just kind of a little bit sort of checking each other out. And there's this awkward mating phase that's going through the happening not going through at the moment but happening to them at the moment here comes another one of the females she's also coming out now and they are looking absolutely beautiful in this sunshine uh, like I say now Lou you reckon this is socks I don't think this is socks socks is a lighter individual than this I'm pretty sure socks was the one that was more caramel colored over the body I might be wrong but I'll check and see a little bit later it could be her let's see I'm sure she had more caramel coloration on her than that, but that, like I say, could be wrong. Now, we we're talking about an individual wild dog, if, for those of you that don't know what we're on about and why we're calling it Socks, is because we had the pack a few weeks, a few days ago, not weeks ago, and um, it, there's an individual that has very, very white socks and is quite a light coloration, and we were commenting about how Senzo would be jealous about the socks that that wild dog had, and so we decided to name her Socks, and she must be around here somewhere it is the right pack for her to be in so if that's not her then she is here but maybe Lou you are right I'm not 100% sure we'll have to wait for all of them to come filing past us to make 100% sure but you see how females will often lie together this one's getting too hot now in the sun she's decided mm -mm, I'm going to go and lie in the shade instead I'm not going to deal with this hot sunshine it's going to be far better no not that side of the bush this side of the bush 
So, Den and Tom, uh, what makes packs split up is, is a little bit difficult. Sometimes it's younger individuals that want to, that have this urge to mate, and because generally it's an alpha system, the females can't, and they split off, and the males then follow some of the females out. So that's sometimes it. Sometimes it's to do with the fact that the pack's getting too large, and it's not finding enough food to sustain everybody, so everyone pushes off. But given that this pack splits around the denning season, I think there's more a situation that this was all to do with these guys and breeding and reproduction because most of the dogs in this particular grouping bar that male that is collared are all fairly young dogs these are all dogs that are not very old at all they're dogs that have spent looks like a little bit of time together and they all look fairly young ears are not tatty in any way coats are really kind of even and, and there's no visible signs of aging on many of them they all look as though they're a lot younger now I see one or two of them are yawning which is great news it means that hopefully these guys are going to start getting up and listen you can hear them squeaking so i'm just going to let them squeak away a little bit this is just them talking to each other as they're moving around now lou if you can just repeat the name for me i got the question but just the name for me Okay, Papa, you're asking why would one of these dogs have a collar on it? So that individual there. Well, there's a big research project on at the moment, which is to dis study distemper and rabies and the treatment thereof to protect wild dogs. Wild dogs, unfortunately, their numbers are declining quite rapidly. And so these collars are on to try and help these dogs and to try and see if they can monitor them and give them top-ups in regards to their vaccinations to try and see if they can eliminate the distemper and rabies virus from dogs and prevent them from getting it. It's one of the biggest threats to wild dogs in this Kruger Park system. And so that is why the collars on. It's a two-year project and they will constantly look for the collars, they find the pack, then top them up. The problem is this particular individual has come away from a different pack and actually funny enough this individual dog which i didn't realize the first time we saw him the other day is a dog that i collared with grant a few months ago so i was with grant when we went and collared these dogs and i actually physically touched that dog which is quite strange it's really odd to see an animal that you physically touched but that is a collar that i put on with grant together um, and we did the the vaccinations and everything and quite it was quite funny because this particular pack was a pack that we really had no hope of finding grant phoned me up one day while i was on leave and he says to me you know i'm gonna go try and find some wild dogs apparently they were seen somewhere but i'm not 100 percent sure the information was not very reliable do you want to come with me so i was like why not i was, might as well go do it ali was here and working and i was by myself and at home and so i thought i'll just go with grant for the day so we went off and we decided we'd look around we couldn't find any sign of the dogs on any of the tourist roads and we got permission then to drive a boundary road which is the only road in a area that is about four times the size of the entire Sabi Sands, including Malamala. So we're talking about a massive tract of land with one road that goes through it. And as we drove up the road, there was the pack lying right next to the road as if after about 10 minutes of going up the road. So we got really lucky and they were lying right out in an open area and we managed to then dart them and, and give them the vaccinations and, and test them and get blood samples and all kinds of other things as well as to put on the collar. So I do have even photographs of us doing it. It was quite an amazing experience. And of that pack, we actually collared two individuals out of that pack just in case this would happen and one splits off and moves off there at least is still a collar on the pack itself but what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go around because most of the dogs are lying in a shady section so I want to just go and see so that we can actually see them at the end of the day as much as it's nice to be on the light side it's also nice to be able to see the wild dogs and quite frankly I'm blinding myself by looking into the light so I'm going to just come around this way Senzo and we'll also give Senzo a lot more to look at and you can see why I was saying it's like a Christmas tree when you see all the wild dogs there we go you can see them all lying at the base of the tree and I can tell you what it looks really cool how is that <laughs> and you can see how tightly knit they all are that they're lying all together under this tree and it also shows you how easy they can be to miss you can imagine if there was a, quite a bit of grass around them how we would be able to drive past them much like we did this morning and not even notice them so it really is very cool to see so there goes our mail off he goes and is moving along Olivia, this particular pack has been treated for distemper and um, rabies. They weren't treated in the Sabi Sands. Funny enough, they were only va they were vaccinated outside in the Kruger National Park when they were at the Kruger area. 
and so they have been treated most of these dogs will have had some form of vaccination and shots whether it's been the full course is anyone's guess at the moment i'll have to ask grant if he's gotten all of them it's obviously difficult for them because they they when they do the top ups they use drop out darts and so they try get the whole pack but it's not easy because the pack obviously runs and every time there's a disturbance in amongst them then they move quite big distances and grant really struggles to be able to keep up with them and, and remember like i was just saying now here in the sabi sands we have roads everywhere and the, and the areas that we cover are not very big and as we can find these dogs fairly quickly with trackers and all kinds of other things but in the Kruger National Park some of those blocks as we call them are so big that once they go in there it sometimes can be three four weeks until they come out again so Grant has a tough time in following all of the dogs but yes this pack most of these individuals will have had some sort of vaccinations whether they work is now the next question so they've got to monitor and see whether the dogs stay safer and whether or not it still affects them but interesting stuff that's going on and hopefully it will work because at the end of the day we would really want the wild dogs to survive and to sustain themselves and to really be a part of the system for a while longer right we're going to sit with our dogs probably the whole afternoon why not it's not every day we get christmas presents like the wild dogs and so we'll enjoy them and see what they're doing and i believe ali is still on the search for some of our big cats <laughs> 